The University of Paris French, Université de Paris, metonymically known as the Sorbonne French, Sabenne, was a university in Paris, France, active 1150–1793, and 1806–1970. Emerging around 1150 as a corporation associated with the Cathedral School of Notre Dame de Paris, it was considered the second oldest university in Europe. Officially chartered in 1200 by King Philip II of France and recognized in 1215 by Pope Innocent III, it was later often nicknamed after its theological college of Sorbonne, in turn founded by Robert de Sorbon and chartered by French King Saint Louis around 1257, internationally highly reputed for its academic performance in the humanities ever since the Middle Ages, notably in theology and philosophy, it introduced several academic standards and traditions that have endured ever since and spread internationally such as doctoral degrees and student nations. Vast numbers of popes, royalty, scientists, and intellectuals were educated at the University of Paris. A few of the colleges of the time are still visible close to Pantheon and Luxembourg Gardens, College des Bernardins 18, Rue de Poissy 75005, Hôtel de Cluny 6, Place Paul Painlev 75005, College Saint-Barbe 4, Rue Villette 75005, College d'Arcourt 44 Boulevard Saint-Michel 75006, and Cordeliers 21, Rue École de Médecine 75006. In 1793, during the French Revolution, the university was closed and by item 27 of the Revolutionary Convention, the college endowments and buildings were sold. A new University of France replaced it in 1806 with four independent faculties, the Faculty of Humanities French, Faculté des Lettres, the Faculty of Law later including Economics, the Faculty of Science, the Faculty of Medicine and the Faculty of Theology closed in 1885. In 1970, following the May 1968 events, the university was divided into 13 autonomous universities. Although all the 13 universities that resulted of the original University of Paris split can be considered its inheritors, just three universities of the post-1968 universities embodied direct faculties' successors while inheriting the name Sorbonne. As well as its physical location in the Latin Quarter, the Pantheon Sorbonne University, Paris I, Law, University of Paris III, Sorbonne Nouvelle, and Paris Sorbonne University, Paris IV, Humanities. From 2010, University of Paris successors started to reorganize themselves into different groups of universities and institutions (COMUE) that later were upgraded to Poles de recherche et d'enseignement supérieur. As a result, various university groups exist in the Paris area, among them Sorbonne Paris Cité, Sorbonne Universities, the University of Paris Saclay, Paris Lumeurs, Paris Seine, and so on. In January 2018, two of the inheritors of the old University of Paris, Paris Sorbonne University and Pierre and Marie Curie University, merged into a single university called Sorbonne University. In 2019, two other inheritors of the University of Paris, namely Paris Diderot University and Paris Descartes University, are also expected to merge. Topic: <inaudible> Origins. <inaudible> <inaudible> In 1150, the future University of Paris was a student-teacher corporation operating as an annex of the Notre Dame Cathedral School. The earliest historical reference to it is found in Matthew of Paris's reference to the studies of his own teacher an abbot of Saint Albans and his acceptance into the fellowship of the elect masters. There in about 1170, and it is known that Pope Innocent III completed his studies there in 1182 at the age of 21. The corporation was formally recognized as an universitas. In an edict by King Philippe Auguste in 1200, in it, among other accommodations granted to future students, he allowed the corporation to operate under ecclesiastic law which would be governed by the elders of the Notre Dame Cathedral School, and assured all those completing courses there that they would be granted a diploma. The university had four faculties, arts, medicine, law, and theology. The Faculty of Arts was the lowest in rank, but also the largest, as students had to graduate there in order to be admitted to one of the higher faculties. The students were divided into four nationalities according to language or regional origin, France, Normandy, Picardy, and England. The last came to be known as the Alemannian German nation. Recruitment to each nation was wider than the names might imply. The English-German nation included students from Scandinavia and Eastern Europe. 
The faculty and nation system of the University of Paris along with that of the University of Bologna became the model for all later medieval universities. Under the governance of the church, students wore robes and shaved the tops of their heads in tonsure, to signify they were under the protection of the church. Students followed the rules and laws of the church and were not subject to the king's laws or courts. This presented problems for the city of Paris, as students ran wild, and its official had to appeal to church courts for justice. Students were often very young, entering the school at 13 or 14 years of age and staying for 6 to 12 years. 12th century, organization Three schools were especially famous in Paris, the Palatine or Palace School, the School of Notre Dame, and that of St. Genevieve Abbey. The decline of royalty brought about the decline of the first. The other two were ancient but did not have much visibility in the early centuries. The glory of the Palatine School doubtless eclipsed theirs, until it completely gave way to them. These two centers were much frequented and many of their masters were esteemed for their learning. The first renowned professor at the school of St. Genevieve was Hubbald, who lived in the 10th century. Not content with the courses at Liege, he continued his studies at Paris, entered or allied himself with the chapter of St. Genevieve, and attracted many pupils via his teaching. Distinguished professors from the school of Notre Dame in the 11th century include Lambert, disciple of Fulbert of Chartres, Drogo of Paris, Maingold of Germany, and Anselm of Laon. These two schools attracted scholars from every country and produced many illustrious men, among whom were, St. Stanislaus of Schipano, Bishop of Krakow, Jebbard, Archbishop of Salzburg, St. Stephen, 3rd Abbot of Saito, Robert d'Arbrissel, founder of the Abbey of Fontevraud etc. Three other men who added prestige to the schools of Notre Dame and St. Genevieve were William of Champo, Abelard, and Peter Lombard. Humanistic instruction comprised grammar, rhetoric, dialectics, arithmetic, geometry, music, and astronomy, trivium and quadrivium. To the higher instruction belonged dogmatic and moral theology, whose source was the scriptures and the patristic fathers. It was completed by the study of canon law. The school of St. Victor arose to rival those of Notre Dame and St. Genevieve. It was founded by William of Champo when he withdrew to the Abbey of St. Victor. Its most famous professors are Hugh of St. Victor and Richard of St. Victor. The plan of studies expanded in the schools of Paris, as it did elsewhere. A Bolognese compendium of canon law called the Decretum Gratiani brought about a division of the theology department. Hitherto the discipline of the church had not been separate from so-called theology, they were studied together under the same professor. But this vast collection necessitated a special course, which was undertaken first at Bologna, where Roman law was taught. In France, first Orléans and then Paris erected chairs of canon law. Before the end of the 12th century, the decretals of Gérard Le Passel, Mathieu d'Angers, and Anselm or Ancel of Paris, were added to the Decretum Gratiani. However, civil law was not included at Paris. In the 12th century, medicine began to be publicly taught at Paris. The first professor of medicine in Paris records is Hugo, Physicus Excellens Key Quadrivium Docuit. Professors were required to have measurable knowledge and be appointed by the university. Applicants had to be assessed by examination. If successful, the examiner, who was the head of the school, and known as Scholasticus, Capiscal, and Chancellor, appointed an individual to teach. This was called the license or faculty to teach. The license had to be granted freely. No one could teach without it. On the other hand, the examiner could not refuse to award it when the applicant deserved it. The School of St. Victor, under the Abbey, conferred the license in its own right. The School of Notre Dame depended on the diocese, that of St. Genevieve on the Abbey or Chapter. The diocese and the Abbey or Chapter, through their Chancellor, gave professorial investiture in their respective territories where they had jurisdiction. Besides Notre Dame, St. Genevieve, and St. Victor, there were several schools on the island and on the mount. Whoever, says Crevier, had the right to teach might open a school where he pleased, provided it was not in the vicinity of a principal school. Thus a certain Adam, who was of English origin, kept his near the Petit Pont. Another Adam, Parisian by birth, taught at the Grand Pont which is called the Pont au Change. Hist, de l'Univers, de Paris, I, 272. The number of students in the school of the capital grew constantly, so that lodgings were insufficient. French students included princes of the blood, sons of the nobility, and ranking gentry. 
The courses at Paris were considered so necessary as a completion of studies that many foreigners flocked to them. Popes Celestine II, Adrian IV and Innocent III studied at Paris, and Alexander III sent his nephews there. Noted German and English students included Otto of Freisingen, Cardinal Conrad, Archbishop of Mainz, St. Thomas of Canterbury, and John of Salisbury, while St. Genevieve became practically the seminary for Denmark. The chroniclers of the time called Paris the city of letters par excellence, placing it above Athens, Alexandria, Rome, and other cities. At that time, there flourished at Paris philosophy and all branches of learning, and there the seven arts were studied and held in such esteem as they never were at Athens, Egypt, Rome, or elsewhere in the world. Les guests de Philippe Auguste. Poets extolled the university in their verses, comparing it to all that was greatest, noblest, and most valuable in the world. As the university developed, it became more institutionalized. First, the professors formed an association, for according to Matthew Paris, John of Sellis, 21st abbot of St. Albans, England, was admitted as a member of the teaching corps of Paris after he had followed the courses Vita Joannis I, 21, abbot. S. Alban. The masters, as well as the students, were divided according to national origin. Alban wrote that Henry II, King of England, in his difficulties with St. Thomas of Canterbury, wanted to submit his cause to a tribunal composed of professors of Paris, chosen from various provinces Hist, Major, Henry II, to end of 1169. This was likely the start of the division according to nations, which was later to play an important part in the university. Celestine III ruled that both professors and students had the privilege of being subject only to the ecclesiastical courts, not to civil courts. The three schools, Notre Dame, Saint Genevieve, and Saint Victor, may be regarded as the triple cradle of the Universitas Scholarium, which included masters and students, hence the name university. Henry Denifel and some others hold that this honor is exclusive to the school of Notre Dame Chartillarium Universitatis Parisiensis, but the reasons do not seem convincing. He excludes St. Victor because, at the request of the abbot and the religious of St. Victor, Gregory IX in 1237 authorized them to resume the interrupted teaching of theology. But the university was largely founded about 1208, as is shown by a bull of Innocent III. Consequently, the schools of St. Victor might well have contributed to its formation. Secondly, Denifel excludes the schools of St. Genevieve because there had been no interruption in the teaching of the liberal arts. This is debatable and through the period, theology was taught. The Chancellor of St. Genevieve continued to give degrees in arts, something he would have ceased if his abbey had no part in the university organization. 13th-14th century, expansion In 1200, King Philip II issued a diploma, for the security of the scholars of Paris which affirmed that students were subject only to ecclesiastical jurisdiction. The provost and other officers were forbidden to arrest a student for any offence, unless to transfer him to ecclesiastical authority. The king's officers could not intervene with any member unless having a mandate from an ecclesiastical authority. His action followed a violent incident between students and officers outside the city walls at a pub. In 1215, the apostolic legate, Robert de Kirkan, issued new rules governing who could become a professor. To teach the arts, a candidate had to be at least 21, to have studied these arts at least six years, and to take an engagement as professor for at least two years. For a chair in theology, the candidate had to be 30 years of age, with eight years of theological studies, of which the last three years were devoted to special courses of lectures in preparation for the mastership. These studies had to be made in the local schools under the direction of a master. In Paris, one was regarded as a scholar only by studies with particular masters. Lastly, purity of morals was as important as reading. The license was granted, according to custom, gratuitously, without oath or condition. Masters and students were permitted to unite, even by oath, in defense of their rights, when they could not otherwise obtain justice in serious matters. No mention is made either of law or of medicine, probably because these sciences were less prominent. In 1229, a denial of justice by the Queen led to suspension of the courses. The Pope intervened with a bull that began with lavish praise of the university. Paris, said Gregory IX, mother of the sciences, is another Cariath Sefer, city of letters. 
He commissioned the bishops of Le Mans and Senlis and the Archdeacon of Chalon to negotiate with the French court for the restoration of the university, but by the end of 1230 they had accomplished nothing. Gregory IX then addressed a bull of 1231 to the masters and scholars of Paris. Not only did he settle the dispute, he empowered the university to frame statutes concerning the discipline of the schools, the method of instruction, the defense of theses, the costume of the professors, and the obsequies of masters and students expanding upon Robert de Kirkon's statutes. Most importantly, the Pope granted the university the right to suspend its courses, if justice were denied it, until it should receive full satisfaction. The Pope authorized Pierre Le Mangor to collect a moderate fee for the conferring of the license of professorship. Also, for the first time, the scholars had to pay tuition fees for their education, two sous weekly, to be deposited in the common fund. Rector The university was organized as follows, at the head of the teaching body was a rector. The office was elective and of short duration, at first it was limited to four or six weeks. Simone de Brienne, legate of the Holy See in France, realizing that such frequent changes caused serious inconvenience, decided that the rectorate should last three months, and this rule was observed for three years. Then the term was lengthened to one, two, and sometimes three years. The right of election belonged to the procurators of the four nations. Topic four. Nations The «nations» appeared in the second half of the 12th century. They were mentioned in the Bull of Honorius III in 1222. Later, they formed a distinct body. By 1249, the four nations existed with their procurators, their rights more or less well defined, and their keen rivalries. The nations were the French, English, Normans, and Picards. After the Hundred Years' War, the English nation was replaced by the Germanic. The four nations constituted the Faculty of Arts or Letters. The territories covered by the four nations were French nation, all the Romance-speaking parts of Europe except those included within the Norman and Picard nations. English nation renamed German nation after the Hundred Years' War, the British Isles, the Germanic-speaking parts of continental Europe except those included within the Picard nation, and the Slavic-speaking parts of Europe. The majority of students within that nation came from Germany and Scotland, and when it was renamed German nation it was also sometimes called Natio Germanorum et Scotorum, nation of the Germans and Scots. Norman nation, the ecclesiastical province of Rouen, which corresponded approximately to the Duchy of Normandy. This was a Romance-speaking territory, but it was not included within the French nation. Picard nation, the Romance-speaking bishoprics of Beauvais, Noyen, Amiens, Lan, and Arras, the bilingual Romance and Germanic-speaking bishoprics of Terouanne, Cambrai, and Tournai, a large part of the bilingual bishopric of Liege, and the southernmost part of the Germanic-speaking bishopric of Utrecht the part of that bishopric located south of the Meuse River, the rest of the bishopric north of the Meuse River belonged to the English nation. It was estimated that about half of the students in the Picard nation were Romance speakers Picard and Walloon, and the other half were Germanic speakers West Flemish, East Flemish, Brabantian and Limburgish dialects. Topic. Faculties To classify professors' knowledge, the schools of Paris gradually divided into faculties. Professors of the same science were brought into closer contact until the community of rights and interests cemented the union and made them distinct groups. The faculty of medicine seems to have been the last to form. But the four faculties were already formally established by 1254, when the university described in a letter, "...theology, jurisprudence, medicine, and rational, natural, and moral philosophy." The masters of theology often set the example for the other faculties, e.g., they were the first to adopt an official seal. The faculties of theology, canon law, and medicine, were called superior faculties. The title of dean, as designating the head of a faculty, came into use by 1268 in the faculties of law and medicine, and by 1296 in the faculty of theology. It seems that at first the deans were the oldest masters. The Faculty of Arts continued to have four procurators of its four nations and its head was the rector. As the faculties became more fully organized, the division into four nations partially disappeared for theology, law and medicine, though it continued in arts. 
Eventually the superior faculties included only doctors, leaving the bachelors to the Faculty of Arts. At this period, therefore, the university had two principal degrees, the baccalaureate and the doctorate. It was not until much later that the licentiate and the dia became intermediate degrees. Topic. Colleges The scattered condition of the scholars in Paris often made lodging difficult. Some students rented rooms from townspeople, who often exacted high rates while the students demanded lower. This tension between scholars and citizens would have developed into a sort of civil war if Robert de Kirkon had not found the remedy of taxation. It was upheld in the Bull of Gregory IX of 1231, but with an important modification, its exercise was to be shared with the citizens. The aim was to offer the students a shelter where they would fear neither annoyance from the owners nor the dangers of the world. Thus were founded the colleges colleger, to assemble, meaning not centers of instruction, but simple student boarding houses. Each had a special goal, being established for students of the same nationality or the same science. Often, masters lived in each college and oversaw its activities. Four colleges appeared in the 12th century, they became more numerous in the 13th, including College d'Arcourt and the College de Sorbonne 1257. Thus the University of Paris assumed its basic form. It was composed of seven groups, the four nations of the Faculty of Arts, and the three superior faculties of theology, law, and medicine. Men who had studied at Paris became an increasing presence in the high ranks of the church hierarchy. Eventually, students at the University of Paris saw it as a right that they would be eligible to benefices. Church officials such as St. Louis and Clement IV lavishly praised the university. Besides the famous College de Sorbonne, other collegia provided housing and meals to students, sometimes for those of the same geographical origin in a more restricted sense than that represented by the nations. There were eight or nine collegia for foreign students, the oldest one was the Danish college, the Collegium Danicum or Dasicum, founded in 1257. Swedish students could, during the 13th and 14th centuries, live in one of three Swedish colleges, the Collegium Uppsaliens, the Collegium Skarens or the Collegium Linkapens, named after the Swedish dioceses of Uppsala, Skara and Linköping. The College de Navarre was founded in 1305, originally aimed at students from Navarre, but due to its size, wealth, and the links between the crowns of France and Navarre, it quickly accepted students from other nations. The establishment of the College of Navarre was a turning point in the university's history. Navarre was the first college to offer teaching to its students, which at the time set it apart from all previous colleges, founded as charitable institutions that provided lodging, but no tuition. Navarre's model combining lodging and tuition would be reproduced by other colleges, both in Paris and other universities. The German college, Collegium Alemannicum is mentioned as early as 1345, the Scots College or Collegium Scoticum was founded in 1325. The Lombard College or Collegium Lombardicum was founded in the 1330s. The Collegium Constantinopolitanum was, according to a tradition, founded in the 13th century to facilitate a merging of the Eastern and Western churches. It was later reorganized as a French institution, the Collège de la Marque Winville. The Collège de Montaigu was founded by the Archbishop of Rouen in the 14th century, and reformed in the 15th century by the humanist Jan Standonk, when it attracted reformers from within the Roman Catholic Church such as Erasmus and Ignatius of Loyola and those who subsequently became Protestants John Calvin and John Knox. At this time, the university also went the controversy of the condemnations of 1210-1277. Topic. 15th–18th century, influence in France and Europe In the 15th century, Guillaume d'Estoutville, a cardinal and apostolic legate, reformed the university, correcting its perceived abuses and introducing various modifications. This reform was less an innovation than a recall to observance of the old rules, as was the reform of 1600, undertaken by the royal government with regard to the three higher faculties. Nonetheless, and as to the Faculty of Arts, the reform of 1600 introduced the study of Greek, of French poets and orators, and of additional classical figures like Hesiod, Plato, Demosthenes, Cicero, Virgil, and Sallust. The prohibition from teaching civil law was never well observed at Paris, but in 1679 Louis XIV officially authorized the teaching of civil law in the Faculty of Decretals. The Faculty of Law hence replaced the 
faculty of decretals. The colleges meantime had multiplied, those of Cardinal Lemoine and Navarre were founded in the 14th century. The Hundred Years' War was fatal to these establishments, but the university set about remedying the injury. Besides its teaching, the University of Paris played an important part in several disputes, in the Church, during the Great Schism, in the councils, in dealing with heresies and divisions, in the state, during national crises. Under the domination of England it played a role in the trial of Joan of Arc. Proud of its rights and privileges, the University of Paris fought energetically to maintain them, hence the long struggle against the mendicant orders on academic as well as on religious grounds. Hence also the shorter conflict against the Jesuits, who claimed by word and action a share in its teaching. It made extensive use of its right to decide administratively according to occasion and necessity. In some instances it openly endorsed the censures of the Faculty of Theology and pronounced condemnation in its own name, as in the case of the flagellants. Its patriotism was especially manifested on two occasions. During the captivity of King John, when Paris was given over to factions, the university sought to restore peace, and under Louis XIV, when the Spaniards crossed the Somme and threatened the capital, it placed 200 men at the king's disposal and offered the Master of Arts degree gratuitously to scholars who should present certificates of service in the army Jourdain, Hist, de l'univers. De Paris au XVIIE et XV siècle, 132-34, archive, du ministère de l'instruction publique. 1793, abolition by the French Revolution The ancient university disappeared with the ancient regime in the French Revolution. On 15 September 1793, petitioned by the Department of Paris and several departmental groups, the National Convention decided that independently of the primary schools, there should be established in the Republic three progressive degrees of instruction, the first for the knowledge indispensable to artisans and workmen of all kinds, the second for further knowledge necessary to those intending to embrace the other professions of society, and the third for those branches of instruction the study of which is not within the reach of all men." Measures were to be taken immediately. For means of execution the department and the municipality of Paris are authorized to consult with the Committee of Public Instruction of the National Convention, in order that these establishments shall be put in action by 1 November next, and consequently colleges now in operation and the faculties of theology, medicine, arts, and law are suppressed throughout the Republic." This was the death sentence of the university. It was not to be restored after the revolution had subsided, no more than those of the provinces. 1806–1968, re-establishment The university was re-established by Napoleon on 1 May 1806. All the faculties were replaced by a single centre, the University of France. The decree of 17 March 1808 created five distinct faculties, law, medicine, letters, humanities, sciences, and theology. Traditionally, letters and sciences had been grouped together into one faculty, that of arts. After a century, people recognized that the new system was less favorable to study. The defeat of 1870 at the hands of Prussia was partially blamed on the growth of the superiority of the German university system of the 19th century, and led to another serious reform of the French university. In the 1880s, the «license» bachelor degree is divided into, for the Faculty of Letters, Letters, Philosophy, History, Modern Languages, with French, Latin and Greek being requirements for all of them, and for the Faculty of Science, into, Mathematics, Physical Sciences and Natural Sciences, the Faculty of Theology is abolished by the Republic. At this time, the building of the Sorbonne was fully renovated. Topic. May 1968-1970, shutdown. In 1966, after a student revolt in Paris, Christian Fouché, Minister of Education, had proposed the reorganization of university studies into separate two- and four-year degrees, alongside the introduction of selective admission criteria, as a response to overcrowding in lecture halls. Dissatisfied with these educational reforms, students began protesting in November 1967, at the campus of the University of Paris in Nanterre. Indeed, according to James Marshall, these reforms were seen 
as the manifestations of the technocratic capitalist state by some, and by others as attempts to destroy the liberal university." After student activists protested the Vietnam War, the campus was closed by authorities on of March and again on 2 May 1968. Agitation spread to the Sorbonne the next day, and many students were arrested in the following week. Barricades were erected throughout the Latin Quarter, and a massive demonstration took place on 13 May, gathering students and workers on strike. The number of workers on strike reached about 9 million by of May. As explained by Bill Readings, President Charles de Gaulle responded on May 24 by calling for a referendum, and the revolutionaries, led by informal action committees, attacked and burned the Paris Stock Exchange in response. The Gaullist government then held talks with union leaders, who agreed to a package of wage rises and increases in union rights. The strikers, however, simply refused the plan. With the French state tottering, de Gaulle fled France on May 29 for a French military base in Germany. He later returned and, with the assurance of military support, announced general elections within 40 days. Over the next two months, the strikes were broken or broke up while the election was won by the Gaullists with an increased majority. 1970, division Following the disruption, de Gaulle appointed Edgar Faure as Minister of Education. Faure was assigned to draft reforms about the French university system, with the help of academics. Their proposal was adopted on the 12th of November 1968 in accordance with the new law. The faculties of the University of Paris were to reorganize themselves. Some of the new universities took over the old faculties and the majority of their professors. Social Sciences by Panthéon Sorbonne University, Law by Panthéon Assis University, Humanities by Sorbonne Nouvelle and Paris Sorbonne University, Natural Sciences by Paris Descartes University and Pierre and Marie Curie University. The 13 successor universities to the University of Paris are now split over the three academies of the Ile de France region. Most of these successor universities have the joined the six groups of universities and higher education institutions in the Paris region, created in the 2010s. Use of the building In 1968 Following the May 1968 events, French higher education was reorganized in the Foray Law of November 12, 1968. Some of the 13 autonomous universities created after the breakup of the University of Paris maintained operations in the Sorbonne building and decided to keep the word Sorbonne in their names. The University of Paris 1, Sorbonne, the University of Paris 3, Sorbonne Nouvelle, and the University of Paris 4, Paris Sorbonne. Two other universities maintained operations in the building but opted to abandon the name, the University of Paris 5 Paris Descartes and the University of Paris 7 Paris Diderot. .Two additional higher education institutions also remained active in the historical Sorbonne building, the École des Chartes and the École Préique de Hautes Etudes. Furthermore, the University of Paris II Panthéon Assis, while not based in the Sorbonne building, does operate from the Panthéon site across the Cougis Street. The common heritage and estate of the University of Paris including the Sorbonne building was not divided and instead placed under the authority of a common administration, the Chancellerie des Universités de Paris, whose headquarters are also located in the Sorbonne building. The building as a whole is then a common asset of the 13 successor universities of the University of Paris, and particularly the Mon Monumental sections are not attributed to any single university but shared by all of them the Sorbonne Chapel, the Cower Dunyer, the Peristyle, and the Grand Amphitheatre. Some of the dependencies are administered by one of the successor universities while remaining a common asset. The Library of the Sorbonne Bibliothèque Interuniversitaire de la Sorbonne is a common library of the universities Panthéon Sorbonne, Sorbonne Nouvelle, Sorbonne Université, Paris Descartes, and Paris Diderot, administered by Panthéon Sorbonne. The classrooms, libraries and administrative offices are attributed to the universities maintaining operations in the building, Panthéon Sorbonne, Sorbonne Nouvelle, Sorbonne Université which also has its headquarters, Paris Descartes and Paris Diderot. All of them also operate in other campuses established across Paris. The name and brand Sorbonne Despite being a highly valued brand, the Sorbonne universities did not register their names as trademarks until the 1990s. 
Over the following years, they established partnerships, merging projects and associated institutions with the name Sorbonne, sometimes triggering conflicts over the usage and ownership of the name. After the Faure Law of 1968, Parisian universities, as other universities in other French cities, received names composed of their city of origin and a number. They also chose an accompanying name and they usually go together in official documents, and colloquially may be referred as one or the other, Paris 1, or Panthéon Sorbonne, Université de Paris 1 Panthéon Sorbonne, Université de Paris 2 Panthéon Assis since 2018, in a pact of association with the so-called Sorbonne University Université de Paris 3 Sorbonne Nouvelle Université de Paris 4 Paris Sorbonne since 2018, part of the Sorbonne University Université de Paris 5 Paris Descartes Université de Paris 6 Pierre et Marie Curie also now part of the Sorbonne University Université de Paris 7 Paris Diderot Université de Paris 8 Vincennes later renamed Vincennes Saint-Denis Université de Paris 9 Paris Dauphine Université de Paris 10 Paris Nanterre Université de Paris 11 Paris Sud Université de Paris 12 Paris Val-de-Marne later renamed Paris Est Crédile Val-de-Marne Université de Paris 13 Paris Nord However, almost 30 years went by without any of them registering their names as a trademark. The first one to do it was the University of Paris 4 Paris Sorbonne, who trademarked the name Université de Paris Sorbonne in 1996, followed by the registration of the updated logos over the next decade. It was followed by Sorbonne Nouvelle and Panthéon Sorbonne in 1999. In 2007 Paris 4 trademarked also the brand. La Sorbonne. In 2006 it had granted permission to the authorities of Abu Dhabi to use the brand Sorbonne in the entire Middle East region. The Sorbonne Abu Dhabi logo was trademarked in 2007, blocking other Sorbonne universities from doing the same. This last initiative triggered a crisis with the other Sorbonne universities, forcing the French authorities to intervene. The local governments of Paris and the Ile-de-France region threatened to block the merger of Paris 2, Paris 4 and Paris 6, who had trademarked the brand Université de la Sorbonne, if they persisted in taking over the name Sorbonne for themselves at the expense of the other Sorbonne universities. Later the merging project advanced only between the universities of Paris 4 and Paris 6 but was forced to reconsider the name Sorbonne Université. The compromise in 2010 consisted of adding a S. At the end of the name of the project, the future merged university would be named later, making it Sorbonne Universités. In 2018 the project effectively merged the former universities of Paris 4 and 6, taking the name Sorbonne Université, with or without the hyphen. In line with the naming convention and with the former crisis of 2006 in the background, the number in the name disappears and the accompanying name becomes Sorbonne Université, replacing Paris Sorbonne and Pierre et Marie Curie. The new naming is then Université Sorbonne Université or Université Sorbonne Université, though colloquially and in most communications, and in registered trademarks is simply Sorbonne Université. The first university in the name refers to the fact that it is a university, only public higher education institutions are allowed to use that term in France, and the second University comes from the naming convention of adding a name after the city number designation. Currently Sorbonne Université is the only Sorbonne University not using a number in its name. The University of Paris II trademarked the brand Université Sorbonne Assis in 2007 and Sorbonne Assis in 2013. Topic. Specific programs and institutions Panthéon Assis offers an international degree in its Sorbonne Assis International Law School. Panthéon Sorbonne operates the Sorbonne Law School, the Sorbonne Art School, the Sorbonne Business School through the Business Administration Institute of Paris, IAE Paris and the Sorbonne Publishing House Editions de la Sorbonne. Other mergers or association projects 
Sorbonne Paris Cité University gathers the universities of Sorbonne Nouvelle, Paris Descartes, Paris Diderot, Paris Nord and other higher education institutions. Hautes Écoles Sorbonne Arts et Métiers gathers several Parisian higher education institutions. In January 2018, the universities of Paris Sorbonne and Pierre and Marie Curie University merged into Sorbonne University. By January 2019, the Paris Diderot University and the Paris Descartes University are also to merge. Notable people Faculty Alumni Carlos Alvarado Larocco, writer Paul Bia, President of Cameroon Jean-Francois Delmas, archivist, director of the Bibliothèque Guimbertine and the Museums of Carpentras Aklalu Habte Wold, Ethiopian politician that served in Haile Selassie's cabinet Ekaterina Fleischitz, first female Russian criminal defense lawyer Darman Nasushin, coordinating minister for economic affairs of Indonesia Jean Perelevade, French civil servant, politician and business leader Issei Sagawa, cannibal and murderer Michel Sapin, Deputy Minister of Justice from May 1991 to April 1992, Finance Minister from April 1992 to March 1993, and Minister of Civil Servants and State Reforms from March 2000 to May 2002. Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson, head of the Chabad Lubavitch movement Ahmed El Tayeb, Grand Imam of Al Azhar Polthais, attorney, interior designer, and founder of P&T Interiors in New York City Jean Pierre Theolet, French writer Loïc Vaidelorge, French historian Reynald Abad, historian, winner of the Gizet Prize of the Académie Française Jean Beckler, historian, member of the Académie des Sciences Morales et Politiques Ranvijay Patwardin, lawyer, psychologist, art critic, literator, and member of the Nobel Committee for Literature Abigail Patwardin, lawyer, historian, political commentator and member of the Académie des Sciences Morales et Politiques Yves-Marie Berset, historian, winner of the Madeleine Lorraine Portimer Prize of the Académie des Sciences Morales et Politiques and member of the Académie des Sciences Morales et Politiques Culbouchon Nakange, lauded professor of University of Paris, Sorbonne, lawyer, portrait painter and art collector, recipient of Legion of Honor of France Janine Chanter, philosopher winner of the Bigot Prize of the Académie Française Jean-Claude Chinet, historian and professor at the Collège de France Chivance Balsavar, noted English barrister, professor of international human rights law at Edinburgh University and University of Paris, Sorbonne Manamala Marivar, professor of ancient history and figurative art and member of Académie Française Rukmini Dave, professor of international law and political philosophy at University of Paris, Sorbonne, member of the Pulitzer Prize Committee and visiting professor at SOAS, London Antoine Compagnon, Professor of French Literature at the Collège de France Philippe Contamin, Historian, Member of the Académie des Inscriptions at Belles Lettres Denis Cruzet, Renaissance Historian, Winner of the Madeleine Lorraine Portimer Prize of the Académie des Sciences Morales et Politiques Marc Fumaroli, Member of the Académie Française and Professor at the Collège de France Asterisk Olivier Fourcade, Historian of Political and International Relations at the University of Paris Sorbonne and Sciences Po Paris Paris, member of the French National Council of Universities NRU Pod Pendharkar, member of Sciences Po Paris, linguist, advisor on human rights issues to UNICEF Edith Phillips, American writer and educator Jean Robert Pitt, geographist, member of the Académie des Sciences Morales et Politiques Arvind Shripad Mukherjee, felicitated architect, lawyer, visiting professor at the Grenoble School of Management William Broughtons, noted architect, professor of human resource management at European Business School Paris Jean Favier, historian, member of the Académie des Inscriptions at Belles Lettres, president of the French Commission for UNESCO Nicolas Grimmel, Egyptologist, winner of the Gaston Maspero Prize of the Académie des Inscriptions at Belles Lettres et member of the Académie des Inscriptions at Belles Lettres, winner of the Diane Potier-Bose Prize of the Académie Française. 
Claude Lacouto, Professor of Medieval German Literature, winner of the Strasbourg Prize of the Académie Française Jean-Luc Marion, philosopher, member of the Académie Française Daniele Pistone, musicologist, member of the Académie des Beaux-Arts Jean-Yves Taudier, Professor of French Literature, Grand Prize of the Académie Française Jean Toulard, historian, member of the Académie des Sciences Morales et Politiques Chaim Brasis Fabrice Bardèche Philippe G. Cherlet, Gérard Ferry, Jacques Louis Lyons, Marc Yor, Bernard Derrida, Francois Lozer, Claire Voisin, Jean Michel Corin, Michel Talagrand, Claude Cohen Tanauji, Serge Haroche Nobel Prizes Alumni <inaudible> 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 The university counts 50 Nobel Prize winners, placing it in 14th position globally, and second outside of the English-speaking world. The Sorbonne has taught 11 French presidents, almost 50 French heads of government, two popes, as well as many other political and social figures. The Sorbonne has also educated leaders of Albania, Canada, the Dominican Republic, Gabon, Guinea, Iraq, Jordan, Kosovo, Tunisia and Niger among others. List of Nobel Prize winners that had attended the University of Paris or one of its 13 successors. Topic: <inaudible> Faculty. List of Nobel Prize winners that were affiliated with the University of Paris or one of its 13 successors. Topic: <inaudible> Notes. Topic: <inaudible> Sources. <inaudible> 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 This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Herbermann, Charles, ed. 1913. University of Paris. Catholic Encyclopedia. New York, Robert Appleton. Topic. Further reading Lutrat, Jean Louis, De l'Université aux Universités From the University to the Universities, Paris, Association des Universités de Paris, 1997. Rive, Philippe, La Sorbonne et sa Reconstruction, The Sorbonne and its Reconstruction, Lyon, La Manufacture, 1987. Tuilier, André, Histoire de l'Université de Paris et de la Sorbonne, History of the University of Paris and of the Sorbonne, in two volumes, From the Origins to Richelieu, From Louis XIV to the Crisis of 1968, Paris, Nouvelle Library de France, 1997. Verger, Jacques, Histoire des Universités en France, History of French Universities, Toulouse, Editions Privet, 1986. Topic. External links Chancellery des Universités de Paris, official homepage. Projet Studium Parisiens, database of members of the University of Paris from the 11th to 16th centuries. HTTPS colon slash slash www.sorbonne.fr, toutes les universités.